All right, John Glenn is in a capsule flying around the Earth, and as he comes around the dark side of the Earth into the light, you have the light shining down on the side of the planet just like this. He's coming out into the light. Just before he gets to the light, all of the particles in space right around him, his capsule, are being illuminated by these rays that come off to the side of the Earth. So he's got a pocket where he can see these particles along and with a black background. And he did. He said, I see them coming forward. And then as I'm leaving, coming to the other side, I could turn around backwards and see them behind me because he's in the same pocket but going around and leaving them instead of cascading into them. And he did say he's swirling into them. They're swirling around his capsule. We're going to listen to these, to what he says. But don't forget, here he is here. Here's the light rays from the sun. You can see my simulated sun. And here's the particles coming down. They come down right here. As he's leaving, he's right here. He's looking back and he's seeing out in the darkness of space. And he's seeing all the dust particles and whatever they are, illuminated. Those are his fireflies. And they could be light, too. They could be ionized particles. So now, now he comes around this side, and the same thing here. Here's where the light particles come down over here. All right, just think about this way. You got, the particles are coming straight down here. What's he doing? He's coming around in the dark, as dark as can be. Nothing there. And he's looking into darkness, and all of a sudden, he get right here, and he's being swarmed by these glowy particles. And that's exactly what he will say. All right, now I'm going to get back with Jim. Here we go. Okay, my friends, another shocker du jour. Going back 60 years to 1962. John Glenn takes off to be the first American in orbit around Earth. As he's going around the Earth, he sees something he calls fireflies. He starts reporting, this is crazy. Well, I'm seeing these crazy, crazy things. And they say, oh, well, we all figured this out and mystery solved because Scott Carpenter tapped on the side and saw the exact same thing, so we know exactly what it was. Well, I dispute that totally. Here's what John, got John Glenn had to say, and we are going to listen to his actual transcriptions and see the things he saw, and then you'll make your own decision. He says, I'm in a big mass of thousands of very small particles that are brilliantly lit up like they're luminescent, glowy little like LEDs. Glenn went on. They are bright yellowish green. Yellowish green is very close to the same color in the spectrum. Yellow and green is very close. They are about the size and intensity of a firefly on a real dark night. I've never seen anything like it. And then he starts going crazy. I listen to what he has to say. We're going to actually hear the original transcription. All right, listen to this. This is Scott Carpenter. He's going to show that that um, John Glenn's fireflies were nothing more than particles of of um, you know ice and so forth. So here he's supposed to be the first. Scott Carpenter, hold on. Carpenter, believed by many of to be America's first scientist, astro astronaut, entered the final sunrise of his mission with a bang of his hand against the wall of the Mercury capsule known as Aurora 7. The moment he struck the wall, he was flying through a swarm of fireflies like John Glenn saw. Again, he struck the capsule with bulkheads and more fireflies. Scott Carpenter proved beyond a question the mysterious fireflies originated from vapor vented from the spacecraft, vapor produced by the astronaut's own body, ice crystals, vented. Let's see if, you know, he could have, he could have had some, yes. That's not, what's, that's not what John Glenn saw. All right, this is John Glenn's account from 1962. This is Spacelink TV, and it goes back to 2017. John Glenn describes fireflies in space while orbiting Earth. Now, they all thought he was crazy. Now, listen to what he says. It has nothing to do with him knocking off space ice crystals from vapor that they're breathing outwards. Listen to what he has to say. Now 
again, this is Space Link TV. It was nicely done. They lit up like they're luminescent. I never saw anything like it. They're around the little, they're coming by the capsule. Uh, and they look like little stars, a whole shower of them coming by. Uh, they swirl around the capsule and go in front of the window, and they're all brilliantly lighted. Uh, they probably average maybe uh, seven or eight feet apart, but I can see them all down below me also. Uh, negative, negative. They're very slow. Uh, they're not going away from me more than maybe uh, uh, three or four miles per hour. They're going at the same speed I am approximately. All right, you're going to hear a lot of static, and the static is because of these particles. They are charged particles. When you run radio frequencies through charged particles, you get static. You need to have clean airwaves. All right, so here it goes. And he's going to be saying, is anybody there? Is anybody there? These are, and he, they're all in front of him, they're behind him, and they only show up during the sunset and the sunrise. And that's because he's looking into dark space, and these particles are mostly, I would believe, primarily sand and, and little tiny grains of particles that are floating in space. Because they, they get dimmer and dimmer, and then, then you can only see the big ones. Watch. Just listen. They're only very slightly under my speed. Over. He's going right through them now. Uh, they, do, they do have a different motion, though, from me. Uh, because they swirl around the capsule and then depart uh, back the way that I am looking. Are you receiving? Over. There are literally thousands of them. Uh, this is Friendship 7. Uh, am I in contact with anyone? Over. This has been going on since about 1 to plus 1, 5, over. Just after I remarked about the sunset, I looked back up and looked out the window, and uh, all the little swirl of particles was going by, over. Uh, this is Friendship 7 uh, broadcasting in the blind. The sunrise uh, has come up behind in the periscope. It was brilliant in the scope, a brilliant red as it approached the horizon and came up. And just as the... As I looked back up out the window, I had uh, literally thousands of small luminous particles uh, swirling around the capsule and going away from me at maybe uh, three to five miles per hour. I'm going to explain exactly what he's seeing and why he's only seeing them. At sunrise, when he's coming forward, he's looking in front and he sees them. And at sunset, when he's coming out of the sun, he looks back and he sees them. Why is he had to look forward one time and look back the other time? I explain it very, very simple. All right, it's really quite simple what's going on here. What's coming out of the sun is a, just a, tons of particles. There's light, there's dust, there's all kinds of debris. They call it the solar wind. It impacts the, sun, the earth as the earth rolls around. So as the earth impacts with these particles, which are coming from the sun in this type of an angle. So where are they going to come? They're going to come here and off here. If John Glenn is right here looking through the darkness, out into the darkness of space, whatever is here is going to be illuminated like dust particles in a barn. You ever see the cracked doors in a barn? You can look through and see all the dust particles floating around, exactly what he's seeing. And as he gets further and further into the sunlight, he can still see some because they're big. That's all it is. Now, but that is the scrub zone. That's why you hear all that <coughs> He was scrubbing through there. Now he gets out of it, and he's more or less into a homogenous sort of state. But when you're passing in and out, as he was, coming out and seeing him, and then when he came around the other side coming in, he sees him looking backwards. It's as simple as that. And those are the impact of the particles. So this is the trajectory on this side. All right, so he's here he is, he looks back and he sees him. As he comes this way to the sunrise, he looks out right here. He's looking through darkness, he sees him. Once he gets into the sunlight, it's all over, it's just too much. But I do find it very interesting that they can't see 
you know, it looks dark out here, black, and they can't see anything out there at all in the visible spectrum. I find that kind of interesting. All right, just so we don't lose things here. When he looks back this way, and he's in the darkness. He's looking out of the darkness. He can't see these rays hitting him in the face. He's looking through them, and he's seeing all these particles illuminated. And he's got to look backwards. When he comes up this way, same thing here, but he's looking forward. And he's still in the darkness looking out. And he says, well, once the sunrise came up, once the sunrise set, that's the key. Okay, so here we are back at John Glenn, and he's going to be describing, there's another three or four minutes to this, very, very good. If you think Scott Carpenter's tapping on the side and saying, oh, there they are, and it's all over, being the first scientist in space, well, good for scientists in space. I say John Glenn was the first real scientist in space. He's got, he's got, you know, he's curious. All right? He's not judgmental, he's curious. Some of them are furious. When he's come against them, they get furious. They don't get curious. Now here goes. I don't know about Scott Carpenter here. I'm not accusing him of anything, but trust me, for him to, to just leave it at that, that's not a scientist. Uh, I still have some of these little particles coming around the capsule occasionally here. I can see them against the dark sky even on the day side, over. Yeah, see, he's still seeing them, but he's probably seeing mostly only the big ones now. He's going to get, they're going to be not real visible. That's just the way things are. The smaller they are, the less hard they are to see, the more visible the lights around them. just as sunrise as I was showing you before. He's looking up and the sun is coming out and he's going to just getting started to see it on the edge. Some of them uh, float almost with me. Most of them appear to be moving at about three to five miles an hour away from me. I'm going just a little faster than they are. Over. Uh, only really unusual thing so far beside ASCS trouble uh, were the little particles, luminous particles around the capsule, just thousands of them, uh, right at sunrise over the Pacific. Over. Uh, this is Friendship 7. I do not think they were from my control jets. Negative. Over. Uh, Roger, Friendship 7. This is Canton. We have TM solid. Uh, go ahead. Over. Uh, Roger, this is Friendship 7, and now that sunrise is starting, I have all these little particles coming around the capsule again, just at sunrise. Just at sunrise. Uh, Roger, Friendship 7. I also can see the light on my, uh, on steam from the thruster when I operate it, over. All right, so he can see, Does, he knows the difference. Uh, this is Friendship 7, I think my, uh, I can see a little bit of steam spitting against the dark sky here occasionally from my pitch down manual thrust, over. Yeah, uh, Roger. Uh, this is Friendship 7. All these little particles, there are thousands of them, and they're not coming from the capsule. They're something that's already up here. Because they're all over the sky, way out. I can see them uh, as far as I can see in each direction almost. All right, so he, they're all completely surround them as far as you can see. And that's because they're being illuminated by the sun. Now, as he moves into that more lit up area, he won't see them illuminated as strongly because they 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 won't they will be part of the backdrop instead of being really bright. Roger, thank you, sir. Uh, this is Friendship Seven. I'm trying to get some pictures of these particles that are outside here. Over. I, there's going to be, a, every now and then you'll see a big one. One of them floats right by him, a very big one. 
and they wouldn't be different sizes because they're I believe they're different sun uh, sand and dust and uh, who knows what uh, thank you, sir. You see, they're trying to obscure the thing. Oh, well, he might have deployed this bag, which forced all these particles to be dust-like particles. And he knows it. He knows he's trying to be set up. All right, Roger. Did someone report landing bag could be down, over? I think, you know, we had a uh, request to monitor this and did not get Does that sound like what Scott Carpenter was talking about? I saw them at the same spot on the first orbit, over. Coming into the sunlight. Are you still seeing the particles around here? Negative. I don't seem to see them around here on this side. I saw a few, uh, just a few, uh, just after I left Canaveral and turned around facing forward. Uh, they were coming toward me at that time. I was going, uh, so I know that they are not coming from the castle at all. See, he knows. There's no question. He, he, and they could just dismiss anything they want to dismiss. That is the issue of science. Uh, I saw the particles in, uh, in huge quantities at each sunrise so far. Over. Here it is. At each sunrise and each sunset. At the sunset, he had to turn around and look, and he could see them in the darkness again. Very, very simple for, to, to understand this.